All right, welcome to Tech Heart, rock stars. What are we gonna talk about today? Something fun, the dark net, the deep web. We're gonna talk about Tor and Tor browser and a couple OS's that help us use those services and protocols. Uh, let's just dive right in, what do you think? First, we're gonna need a terminal, boom. Let's go snap it to the right, bang. Let's open up Firefox. And let's chat a little bit. Um, I'm gonna do everything in the terminal. However, we'll need to burn some of the software we're gonna download here in a minute to a, a USB card. You might have software already and know how to do it. If you don't, just run over to etcher.bellina.io, click the download etcher button, uh, pick your platform, Windows, Mac OS, or for me, Linux 64, and click download, you'll find yourself with Bolina Etcher .app image. If you're on Linux, you'll put chmod plus x Bolina Etcher, and you run it with a period slash Bolina Etcher, Etcher .app image. Uh, so you'll need that software to burn the next thing we're gonna talk about. Tails OS is a portable operating system that protects us against surveillance and censorship. Let's go over here and click Install Tails. So we're gonna click on Linux, or you can click Windows or Mac OS if that's you. Uh, if this is your first time using Tails OS, I do suggest that you read this entire web page. At least the, uh, the numbered instructions on how to get it, one through eight. It'll tell you a lot of good information about protecting your identity when using Tails, the limitations of the Tor network, and other important stuff that you'd, you'd wanna know. Depending on your threat level, you know, these may mean more to you than the next person. I don't get on the dark web to do anything too crazy. So uh, while I wanna be secure and make sure I verify the download, at any rate, you wanna click the green button and download the image. I believe I already have it right there. We'll scroll, scroll down a little bit more. We're gonna find the verify your download section. Uh, I've already done this through the terminal. It's just verifying the MD5 sums, but anyway, you can click select your download and select tails. And uh, that'll verify that that dot image file is the tails OS from tails.net. And our verification was successful. Uh, now you can use that Bolina software we downloaded earlier. Just open it up. You'll be able to select the image and uh, select your USB drive. I'm gonna do it here from the terminal. So I'll just do an LS black to find out that my uh, USB stick is devsdc. So I'm gonna use a command, dd if uh, tails image of equals devfdc bs 16 megs o flag direct. I actually see a error here. Make sure, oops, make sure that's right. And I have to also run that with sudo, go! While that's burning, let's talk about the next software. Maybe you do want to use your computer to connect to uh, Tor. That's fine. However, we're gonna do so within a VM. What we'll use is a software called VirtualBox, Oracle VM VirtualBox, and that's gonna be the VM software that we can build a virtual machine in. However, the OS that we'll use, we'll use is Hoonix. Hoonix is an awesome OS. It comes in two VMs. One is the gateway and one is the workstation. So the gateway VM is the link to Tor. No traffic goes anywhere from your workstation VM unless it goes through the gateway. Uh, this setup, offers superior internet privacy. Let's grab Hoonix by clicking download now. We're gonna click the virtual box method and then you download this .ova file. Click this blue button and you'll download Hoonix XFCE 17.0.4.5.ova. I'm gonna close Firefox now. 
I'll move my terminal over here. We can watch to see when this gets done copying our USB. And over in VirtualBox Manager, click the Import button. Uh, you'll go over to that file, Hunix 17.045, and click Next. Basically, leave everything here the same. Finish. And you'll have to agree and let it, let it do its thing over here. Our Tails OS has finished. It's not mounted, so I'm just going to remove the Tails OS USB and let's set that aside for later. That part's over, Rover. All right, guys, so now let's check out Hunix. Uh, as stated, first run the gateway. So that top icon, start. And you can just put that window off to the side for a minute, let it go, and then start the workstation. Now, everything that you'll be doing on Hunix, you will actually do within the workstation. I'm going to minimize the virtual box uh, window and let these get started up. All right, we're all started up. Make sure you're in the Hunix gateway. We'll work on that first. And you're going to accept these two TOS uh, screens. Setup wizard is complete. Click finish to run system check. Uh, you're going to want here to select connect that every time we start it, it connects to Tor. We don't need a bridge or a proxy. Click next. This will bootstrap Tor. Click finish. We'll open up a, brow a terminal. I'll make it a little bit bigger for you here in a second. And here's our terminal. First, we'll do sudo apt update. The password is currently, oops, that got over me. The password is currently change me and we will change me. And now we'll run a sudo apt upgrade. And there we go, guys. The gateway software is updated. Let's run password, pass WD. The current is change me, and then enter a new password. All right, and last thing that we'll do is we'll run a system check. I know it just did so in GUI, but I wanna see the output. We are connected to Tor. We get some Hunix information. Our app is all updated. Software is updated. Please donate and we're good to go. So now we can close this window and actually we'll minimize, not close, but we'll minimize the gateway uh, and let's open the workstation. Now we have to go through all that on the workstation. I'm just gonna run through it and catch y'all when it's all done. One trick that I like to use, I like to click on desktop settings. I like to pick any of the other uh, backgrounds, right? Just so that I know that I'm working in the workstation and not the gateway. So I set a crazy background and I know I'm in the workstation. I'll quickly show you uh, the Tor browser. You can click on IP check just so that you see Tor is working and your IP is not being displayed. Let's close this down because our main attraction today is Tails OS. Always shut down the workstation first and then shut down the gateway. And that right there, guys, is Hunix. 
a very safe way to connect to Tor, but we're gonna do so with that Tails OS USB that I burned earlier. I'm gonna insert it back into my laptop and we'll do a shutdown. I always like to completely shut down my computer so the memory gets wiped and everything's new and then press uh, the power button as opposed to restarting where some memory could remain. So I'm gonna push the power button. All right, guys, are you ready? Let's boot into Tails, man. Make sure you push Enter or F12 or F1, whatever your bias button is. We'll select the USB option. Let's slide on down and hammer on that Tails USB, baby. Because we're booting into the anemic Tails OS, ready to get on tour and the deep web. All right, once Tails gets loaded up, uh, you have some options. You could set up persistent storage if you like. My threat model doesn't allow me to do that, so I ain't gonna. I always wanted to say that. And then there's additional settings. We'll look at them. I don't think there's any we have to set. You can set an administrative password. That would allow you to install more uh, app packages. Uh, you can un-anonymize your MAC address. I'm gonna keep that on. There's an offline mode. You can disable an unsafe browser. There is an unsafe browser. It is not the Tor browser, but that would allow you to like log on to a network that isn't you know your own or you had to enter a password or, or do something like that. The last option is now obsolete. I don't need to change anything. Tails OS is perfect. So let's click start Tails and get in there, baby. All right, so there we are. I'm on a laptop, so I'll have to click on Wi-Fi. I'll choose mine and connect. Once you get connected to a network, this will pop up. It probably already did if you're on Ethernet. At any rate, we want to click connect to Tor automatically. All right. Uh, the big button here says start Tor browser, and that's all good and dandy, but I also want to view Tor circuits. That window will allow me to see my connections to different Tor nodes. Now I'll start the Tor browser and close this window. All right, and now that we're in a Tor browser, we can do a Tor check. And what that Tor check check does, it, it allows you just to double verify that you're not on your IP and that you are connected. Here's another tip. Always click on this shield right here next to the star and go to settings. And let's go on the safest um, security level. Only allows website features required for static sites and basic services. It'll turn off JavaScript, some fonts and icons are disabled, and audio, video, and uh, WebGL are click to play. Let's rock and roll. The dark web doesn't use www.google.com. It uses .onion sites. So, Tor66 is one of these dark uh, search engines, and I don't even think I'm going to be able to show this. One of the most popular forums is Dread. Now, some of the posts in Dread can be sketchy, and you have to be careful when you're searching around and, and see what you want to access. This is just a forum. It's just people talking. It's not a dark net market. It's not anywhere you can buy or sell something. There's three things that I want to talk about today. None of these are illegal or bad, but you can find their information in Dread if you just go read. The first one is the Hitchhiker's Guide to Online Animity. It's actually a clearnet site, anonymousplanet.org. And uh, you can download a PDF of the Hitchhiker's Guide to Online Anonymity, but we can also open it in our browser right here. And let's scroll down. And I want to show you the first line in the uh, introduction because it says everything about the dark web in one sentence. Introduction. The TLDR for the whole guide, it's a strange game. The only winning move is not to play. <laughs> Another uh, cool dread subreddit or forum is the DNM Bible. That's where you get information about DNMs. But there's also DNM Buyer's Bible, which talks about if you do want to make transactions on the dark web, how to do so safely and uh, suggestions about OPSEC, uh, what operating systems to use. Let's see. What does it suggest, guys? Tails, Hunix, or Cubes? I didn't talk about Cubes today, but that's another one that you can uh, research if interested. It talks about KeePassXC, 
PGP, which is encryption, if you're going to send emails and uh, they need to be anonymous. Talks about cryptocurrencies and how to use them. Uh, shipping, harm reduction, darknet markets, uh, alternative communication methods, and uh, everything that one might need to know while cruising around the deep web, baby! There's also a DNM super list, another dread subreddit of DNMs. These three things will help you. Again, my very favorite is the Hitchhiker's Guide to Online Anonymity. It'll go much deeper than I did today and uh, talk about the things that I, I didn't want to in a good way. And it's nothing bad to read uh, even if you don't want to use the dark web. I guess the last thing I want to show you guys about Tails OS to turn off Tails, you normally just want to click power off and let it shut down completely the correct way. However, you know, if you're ever in a situation where you need this thing offline, all you have to do is pull out the USB card. So I'm going to simulate that right now and I'm going to tell you exactly when I do it. Three, two, one, out! So I pull my USB card and boom, Tails OS wipes the system before anybody can do anything. I mean, they can shove that USB back in and ain't doing them no good. All that data is gone. Just like me.